Welcome to the Educate, Empower, and Evolve podcast. My name is Haley Vera, and I'm a lifestyle coach with my roots in holistic nutrition, personal training, and yoga. I'm a total nerd with a huge passion for gut health and optimizing performance naturally. My mission with the E3 podcast is to help you acquire the knowledge that you need to evolve and reach the next level of yourself. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the E3 podcast. I'm your host, Haley. And today we have a topic that actually has been heavily requested. And I'm going to give a little shout out here because I know that he's going to listen to this podcast episode and be super excited because he's asked me to do it a couple of times. And that is Ryan Boyce. And Ryan Boyce is a colleague or I guess a friend of mine in the industry. He's not on my team, but he has his own uh, coaching business. And uh, yeah, Ryan and I chat all the time. He is an absolute gem and loves the podcast and has requested that I do a podcast episode on reverse dieting. And I thought reverse dieting was kind of like maybe a boring subject in a sense, because a lot of people, first of all, don't know what it means. And so just to see the words reverse diet might kind of like tune out, tune out or check out and, uh, you know, not decide to listen to that episode. So I've actually called this how to lose fat forever. And this is the ultimate guide to reverse dieting. And I'm going to walk you guys through like the step-by-step process for losing fat forever and keeping it off and ending that vicious cycle of yo-yo dieting that so many of you are stuck in. Now, if you're listening to this in your car or on your treadmill, I promise you that I'm going to do my best to actually describe all of the pictures But if you're watching this or if you're able to watch this on YouTube, I strongly recommend watching the YouTube version because I'm actually going to share my screen and we're going to go through a presentation on how to lose fat forever. There's a lot of diagrams and images. And so I suggest watching the video version of this episode if it's possible. If not, I promise that I'll do my best to go into every little nitty gritty detail of all the slides so that you get a a visual representation of what I'm talking about without actually having the pictures in front of you. So let's just dive into the fat loss forever. So if you're thinking about embarking on a fat loss phase, it's really important to understand um, where you're at and actually evaluate whether or not you're truly ready to get started in a fat loss phase. It's really easy to get caught up in the excitement of the journey ahead or to come around the corner from winter and go, oh shit, it's summer. I better get into bikini mode and to start rushing into a fat loss phase without any proper kind of preparation. That can actually be counterproductive and actually very harmful to your overall health and well-being. And I'm going to go into that in some detail. So I just put a couple of pictures up here on the screen of a couple of my clients who have had very successful fat loss journeys. And I'm going to talk about some of the key tips for fat loss as we go through this. So first of all, we need to understand the diet roadmap. When it comes to changing your body composition, there are generally four different phases of dieting, maintenance phase, dieting phase, or the deficit, reverse dieting, and calorie surplus, or what we would kind of call bulking, okay? Each phase has its own specific goals, strategies, and also its own challenges. So number one is really important to understand, and that's determining your maintenance calories. So your maintenance calories are how much food you need to eat in order to maintain your current body weight. So your body weight stays the same. You can step on the scale every day for the next, you know, four to six weeks, eating the amount of food that you're eating, and your body may fluctuate, you know, anywhere from one to five pounds um, up and down you know, within that range, because it's very normal for us to go up or down. And when I say one to five pounds, I mean like total. So a couple pounds down, a couple pounds up, but kind of a maximum fluctuation. And that's your your morning weigh in. I know people that can, you know, especially men can eat a lot during the day, drink a lot of water, and their body weight can be up by like eight to 10 pounds at the end of the day. So we're not talking about like end of day weigh in fluctuations. I'm just saying that we are going to have fluctuations in body weight, even in a maintenance phase usually around that like two to five pound uh, on either side. So maybe you're up to down to, but it's generally in that like five pound bracket. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for your body weight to essentially maintain. And so what I suggest you do is weigh yourself every single day in the morning before you eat for a period of two to four weeks and get the average and make sure you're maintaining that average. And that's going to be your maintenance calories. So 
our next phase is what we would call our fat loss phase. Okay. And so this is when we are actually in a calorie deficit. Um, and that means that you're having less food coming in than you are uh, putting energy out. So sorry, you have, yeah, less food coming in and you have more energy going out, which means that you're in a calorie deficit an energy deficit and your body has to find energy for fuel in order to survive. And that fuel is going to come from your body fat. Um, and there's more details to this that we'll get into, but number three is going to be the reverse diet. And this is the step that most people skip and mess up on. And so the reverse diet is so important because the reverse diet is where we actually bring you from your fat loss phase back up to maintenance. And if you don't do that, what ends up happening is you end up in this vicious cycle of yo-yo dieting where your body weight goes up and down and up and down. And I will show some pictures later in this presentation where that demonstration is made very clear. But the reverse diet is essentially a slow increase of calories while your body goes through metabolic adaptation to bring your metabolism back up to speed into maintenance calories. And then we have an optional step four. I actually recommend for most people who are looking to put on muscle to work in a phase of calorie surplus. Now, a, a calorie surplus can be very minimal, like 50 to 100 calories. That small amount of extra energy will go towards building muscle. Now, muscle itself, I believe a pound of muscle is about 600 calories, but the energy that it takes to build muscle is 3,600. It's a really, really big gap. So we do need to have a calorie surplus to actually maximize our muscle growth potential. Now, yes, you can actually build muscle at any one of these phases. It's a big myth that you can't build muscle when you're losing fat. There are some things that are going to optimize that though. For example, sleep. If you are underslept, your body can lose. If you're in a, in a fat loss phase and you're underslept, your body will become catabolic, meaning you will break down more muscle tissue than fat tissue. And the studies actually demonstrate that it can be up to 80%. So if you are underslept, 80% of your total weight loss could be muscle mass. And if you have been sleeping an adequate amount for your body to recover properly from your training sessions, your fat loss could be up to 80% of fat, okay? There is always going to be a little bit of muscle lost in that deficit phase. And it's pretty hard to avoid that unless you're on some kind of like anabolic um, steroid, essentially. So optimizing everything, sleep, recovery, nutrition, you can probably get like 80%, maybe a little bit higher of uh, total weight loss just from fat loss and having very little of that like dip into your actual muscle. But that extent is going to be very, um, I guess, in relation to the size of the calorie deficit. So the bigger the calorie deficit, the more at risk you are of losing muscle. Anyways, let's go into this a little bit deeper in each stage. So maintenance stage. As I mentioned, the goal of the maintenance phase is to establish a consistent routine and healthy habits while giving your body time to recover from any previous dieting phases. You should spend the majority of your time in maintenance calories to maintain a healthy body weight and healthy body composition. So the maintenance phase, you guys, is eating enough calories to maintain your current body weight. And you might be like, how the heck do I determine how many calories I need? One, you can hire a coach. Two, <laughs> you can just use my calculator. It's not mine. It's sale rabbits. It's my favorite. Go to literally just sale, S-A-I-L, rabbit.com and slash BMR. And to determine the number of calories needed for maintenance, you're going to use this calculator and make sure that you enter all of these things, your age, your sex, your height, your weight, your body fat percentage, and your current activity level, which is an estimate. This estimate is always going to be exactly that, an estimate. It is an educated guess from a calculator based on population averages. You might be different. And that's why it's so important to track your calories, weigh yourself daily, get an average and see which direction your body weight's going in maintenance. If your body weight is going down, you're not in maintenance. It's time to increase your food. Now with salerabbit.com, it gives you all kinds of different um, calculator options. My favorite one to use is the Catch McArdle Hybrid. I'm just gonna have a sip of my delicious latte that I made before it gets cold. Okay, it's already getting cold, classic. So is the catch McArdle hybrid because it takes into body fat percentage, consideration body fat percentage. Now, why is that important? Well, let's just say that there is a an individual who is 200 pounds and 4% body fat, solid muscle. Their energy systems are gonna be on fire most likely because our muscle tissue 
has a higher metabolic rate at rest, meaning it's going to burn more calories at rest than your fat tissue is. And the person who's 200 pounds and 50% body fat is going to have a way slower metabolic rate. And so your body fat percentage makes a really big difference in your TDEE, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So body fat percentage needs to be taken into consideration when you're determining your calories. Now, I'm not going to go into macros today. Macros is a totally other conversation um, where we can go into carbs, fats, proteins, and each of those being optimized for each phase. For example, I'm just going to touch on it lightly. When we're in a maintenance phase, your protein may, between, may be between 1.2 and 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass in a bulking phase. It's actually slightly less, probably the 1.0 to 1.2. And then for fat loss, we want to bump that up for the thermic effect of feeding going up to like 1.6. So it will actually change when you're calculating your total macros from phase to phase, which is also why it's important to know what your goals are and what phase of dieting you're actually in. So with the deficit, um, this is the, the next phase we're going to talk about. And this phase involves eating in a calorie deficit, obviously, which means consuming fewer calories than your body burns in a day. I think most people do a, a fucking terrible job of this because they'll just be like, oh, I'm going to try and lose weight. I'm just going to eat less food. Well, sometimes you're eating less food, but you're not eating enough of the right things. You're not getting enough nutrients. You're not getting enough protein to recover. You're not getting enough fats for healthy hormones and your health will start to decline very quickly. You'll feel lethargic and tired and cranky and overwhelmed. You're, you'll hate your diet. You'll get tired of dieting and then you'll end up going overboard, especially on weekends and evenings. I find that for a lot of people who do what I call dieting year round they'll try and be in a calorie deficit all the time and I know this because I used to do it where I would be like the person that does uh, eat salad with no dressing and has the plain chicken breast with the side of steamed broccoli and tries to maintain that for a ridiculous amount of time until you get what I call mental diet fatigue where you just get exhausted of eating the same boring plain diet foods and then you end up splurging or indulging and so if you look at your actual average calories over the course probably of the year, you'd be in maintenance or slightly above by the time you factor in all those binge eating episodes and evenings or weekends where you kind of fly off the handle. So it is really important that when you're doing a deficit, you look at your calendar and that it's a realistic time of year to do it for you. I find personally, like springtime is good. It's that off season where there's not a lot going on in Canada in terms of like sports and things like that. You know, the winter season is wrapping up. Hiking is still a little bit iffy. It's a good time to really like dial in and get into a calorie deficit. There's less, you know, things going on. There's no holidays or like not a lot of long weekends or barbecues happening. It's an easier time to get into a calorie deficit where you'll be able to maintain that for uh, consistently for that period of time. The worst thing you can do is start in a calorie deficit and then yo-yo your calories around, you know, five good days and then blow it on the weekends. It's going to mess around with your metabolic adaptation and it's going to make it harder to lose weight in the long term. So the goal of this deficit phase is to lose body fat while preserving muscle mass. So some of the things that need to be in place before you can be in a calorie deficit are good routines and habits like training regularly, eating enough protein and knowing what protein is in the first place, like knowing what macros are. Um, you will also need to understand the importance of recovery and be able to listen to your body if you're under recovering, taking that extra rest day, because when your body doesn't have enough nutrients to properly recover, then you're going to be putting yourself into that place where your body is going to be fighting back and it's harder to lose body fat. And I know that there's a lot of arguments out there on like the calories in calories out thing where it's like, you just have to eat less, you know, less calories than you're expending. That's a great idea, but if your body's stressed, if your hormones are out of whack, um, if your body's inflamed, a lot of your food comes from processed food, uh, if you're under eating protein, then where you assume your maintenance calories be is going to be incorrect because your maintenance calories is where your body will maintain and your body will maintain at a lower calorie intake if your body has high levels of inflammation, poor insulin sensitivity, if you're not sleeping well, et cetera. So we need to make sure that when you're going to a calorie deficit, you are dialed in to your sleep routine, your recovery, your training, your nutrition. Otherwise, you're going to be spinning your tires. And one of the biggest mistakes I see most coaches making online 
is that they get a client and they get the pressure from the client to help them lose fat fast. And they just throw them into a large calorie deficit, which can, in the end, put them in a terrible position for rebound weight gain. And it can put them in a terrible position for an unhealthy relationship with food and with dieting because dieting scares them because it means, you know, minimal calories, exhaustion, frustration. It's really important when a client comes into the program that we spend two to six weeks, sometimes longer. If my clients cannot get consistent with their calories, I will not put them in a calorie deficit. I will literally say, until I see you coming within one to 200 calories of your maintenance calories every day for two to four weeks, we cannot start dieting. I need to know where your metabolism is sitting accurately for me to make a decision as to where we should start your diet. Because if I randomly throw you into a calorie deficit, assuming that your body is functioning optimally and my calculator that I used online to determine your maintenance calories is correct. It could be way off. Your metabolism could be way faster, meaning the calorie deficit I put you in, instead of being 500 calories, it ends up being 800 calories. That can have a negative in impact on your long-term metabolism, a negative impact on uh, muscle protein synthesis. It can have, it can make you become essentially catabolic where you're actually breaking down muscle tissue. And it can put you in a place where you are vulnerable to nutrient deficiencies. So the most important phase is maintenance because that's where we want to live and spend most of our time. And that's where you need to start. So you need to figure out where your maintenance is, determine where your body's maintaining. And if you're currently maintaining at 1500 calories and your maintenance calculator tells you that you should be around 2300, it is not time to diet. It is time to reverse diet, which we're going to get into next. So the other question that comes up with being in a calorie deficit is like, how many calories do I need to cut? Uh, in order to lose weight. Now that actually depends a lot on your current body fat percentage. And this one can be a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow because the heavier you, you are, the bigger that deficit can be. I know it sucks. It's like, if you're in like a 30 to 40% body fat percentage, your calorie deficit can be bigger. Well, your body is providing more fuel. It has more body fat. The leaner you are, the smaller I recommend your calorie reduction is. Now, I would say anywhere from 5 to 30% as like an absolute maximum for a calorie deficit, unless you're going into like a show or something like that, competing, needing to get really lean. And then those calorie deficits obviously get bigger beyond like 50% of your calories sometimes. And so for, you know, for my clients, if I'm starting them, I usually start them at 10 to 15% and then we adjust from there. And so your body will actually adapt and depending on how many times you've dieted, it will adapt um, more quickly. So if you've done a lot of dieting in the past, your body gets smart and it will actually learn to adapt faster. And so your metabolic adaptation happens a lot more quickly, meaning that your body will slow down your metabolic function. And a lot of the like normal things that we do, like fidgeting, moving around, we call those our, like our NEAT, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And uh, sorry, I was getting a phone call there. And to really like understand this, we have to, you know, realize that our body is smart and that it wants to survive the day. It doesn't care about you having a six pack. It doesn't care about you having a beautiful booty. It doesn't care about you losing that 10 pounds. It actually likes that 10 pounds because that 10 pounds is it's like backup storage. It's backup storage means that like that part of its body, you know, that part of your body is like holding on for the famine, right? For when there's starvation. And our body has gone through so many periods of time where feast and famine was a real thing. That doesn't exist anymore, but we still put ourselves through it by restricting and binging. So your metabolic adaptation might be super, super quick. The faster your metabolic adaptation is, the longer I tell you to reverse diet and the longer I tell you to stay in maintenance or surplus to bring your metabolism back up, back up and put your body in a safe place. Now, I really don't recommend log dieting any longer than 16 weeks. At that point, I think that it becomes unhealthy and you're likely going to be pushing your calories below that 30% mark because each time you adjust your calories, you will have to continue dropping in order to get more fat loss. Now, some clients, I'll drop it once, they lose weight for 16 weeks and then we reverse. <laughs> some clients, I drop it five, six times and we only diet for eight, eight, 10 weeks and then we reverse. Everybody is different. What works for your neighbor or your friend or your homie at the gym is not necessarily going to work for you. Now, the reverse diet, 
This phase involves slowly increasing calorie intake after a dieting phase. And on my screen, I have a picture of one of my favorite clients. I shouldn't say favorite, but I'm going to say favorite. She's been in the program forever. Her name is Casey. And uh, Casey, I have a little weight graph here. You can see how long we did maintenance calories for. It was basically from like the beginning or end of June through to the end of August. So about three months where we were like, okay, this is where your metabolism is sitting. Great. We understand that. Then we went through a calorie deficit phase. Let me just look at the dates. It was like mid-September until basically mid-December, um, which is around that 16-week mark. And then September, October, November, yeah, 16 weeks. And then we started reverse dieting. And you can see here that her weight was just above 132. So like her lowest weight came down to 132. We started at 146. So we lost just over 10 pounds. And then over the course of about eight to 10 weeks, we reverse dieted. She went from 1680 calories up to 2600 calories and has gained one pound. And if you look at her photos from when we started that reverse diet, she has actually gotten leaner and built more muscle through her reverse diet. She looks better after the reverse diet and she's eating almost a thousand calories more. Now her maintenance when we started was around 2300 calories. 2200. So she's eating three to 400 more calories than she was when we started. Why? Because she's built a shitload of muscle. And that muscle is increasing her resting metabolism and she can eat a lot more food and metabolize a lot more. She's also way more consistent with her routine and her sleep because she understands the importance of recovery. So Casey's been at this getting close to a year. Like if we look at this, it's been, you know, since June. So not, I mean, we're now sitting in March. So it's not been a year yet. But you can see how long we've only done one phase of dieting of 16 weeks this entire year. The rest of the time was maintenance and reverse dieting. And if you look at her photos, she's actually one of my recent transformations on my Instagram page. Um, you can see if you swipe through those pictures, you'll find the photo of Casey before her reverse and after. And if you look at her quads and her glutes, she has so much more definition definition and her waistline is even um, uh, smaller than when we started that reverse diet. And that's like eating almost a thousand calories more food. It's absolutely insane what a reverse diet can do for you. And people skip this. That's the wild part is that people absolutely skip this. And a lot of coaches do their clients a disservice by ending their program and not giving them any kind of insight into reverse dieting or recommendation. If my client program has ended and they don't wanna continue on the reverse diet with me, I will often give them, or I will always give them the instructions to reverse diet, 50 to hundred calories per week over the course of X number of weeks. Based on how their body responded to the diet, it will usually tell me how slowly we need to reverse or how quickly they can reverse. And may, the most of your reverse is going to come from fats and uh, carbs and the rest, your protein will like stay the same because your protein is always within that like 1.2 to 1.6 range for the most part. So what you're actually changing is your carbs and fats, your fats, you want to keep between 25 and 30% of your total calories for healthy hormones, ideally 0.4 um, grams of uh, fat for pound of body mass is kind of the general rule of thumb for healthy hormones. So that's your reverse diet. Now calorie surplus, this involves eating in a calorie surplus, which means consuming more calories than your body burns in a day. The idea here is to provide your body with excess calories to build muscle. Like I said before, muscle takes about 3,600 calories to build. And when you actually have muscle itself, itself is about six to 700 calories, but the actual process of making it, the energy to make it is 3,600. So the goal of the bulk, to increase muscle mass while minimizing fat gain. Now, a lot of people do dirty bulks. I hate dirty bulks. I think they're ridiculous. And I think that it's really important to understand a few things. How long have you been training for? What are your goals? And what is your maximum gain potential? Now, I didn't put a picture of maximum gains potential in here. Again, it's another conversation in a different rabbit hole that we could go down. But essentially, the longer you've been training for, the less gain potential you have, right? For your natural gain potential. The shorter, the newer you are to the gym, if you're a bigger novice in the gym or a newbie, then you have a greater gains potential. And so we need to take that into consideration. And then what you're going to want to do is figure out how many pounds of muscle your gains potential is. If we absolutely max that out, we want to double it because you're probably going to gain about the same amount in fat. So if you want to gain two pounds in the month, we aim for four pounds of weight gain. And then we kind of reverse engineer that and look at how much, how many calories we need to eat in order to get to that weight. Now, it's a lot of math. And is it really worth it to do all the math calculations? I'm kind of like, meh, I do them for my clients. But just as a general recommendation, eat about 10 to 20% above your TDEE. So if you're eating 
2200 calories try 2400 and i don't even go that fast i'm like try 50 calories to 100 calories and see how the the numbers change on the scale and how your energy feels how your recovery is and how your muscles change. So take progress photos. That's really key here because if your body is recomping, your weight can be staying the same while your body actually loses fat and builds muscle. And that can happen in maintenance, but it can also happen in a calorie slight calorie surplus where you're not actually gaining um, as much muscle or gaining as much total weight as you think. So slow and steady wins the race. Um, I have a picture pulled up here where I have uh, my client, Nick, and Nick, over the course of six months, gained nine pounds of muscle. So he's been in the gym for years, like literally years. We met at Golds when I first started personal training. So that's a long time ago. So I've known Nick has been training for a very long time. So his gains potential will be slightly less than someone who was a novice, but he still managed to put on a substantial amount of muscle in that time. Because if you look at his photos, he's actually leaner up nine pounds than he was before. And that can sometimes be confusing, but... Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Um, lean gain potential is an important thing to take into consideration. And then let's talk briefly about long-term calorie restriction. So I have a picture pulled up here of long-term calorie restriction where we see our baseline calories and then we end up going into a calorie deficit. The body adapts, we cut our calories again, and then we keep repeating that process as our body adapts and we hit a plateau until we end up crashing and our calories are like 1200 a day. So many women I have come to me saying they're eating 1200 calories and it's just a, such a big face palm. Like you must be so exhausted. That sounds not fun. So we reverse diet before we do any dieting. Long-term calorie restriction can lead to negative metabolic adaptations. I feel like that is obvious, but when the body is in a state of calorie restriction, um, it responds by actually slowing down its metabolic rate and conserving that energy. That's a survival mechanism that allows the body to survive in times of food scarcity. If calorie restriction is prolonged, the body starts to adapt in a few negative ways. One, slowing down your metabolism. This has an effect on your thyroid while your body tries to conserve energy. Um, this means that we burn fewer calories at rest, which makes weight loss more difficult. We also can lose muscle, calorie restriction, can cause the body to break down muscle tissue for energy and that can have a negative impact on physical health this has a lot to do with our stress levels as well if you're extremely stressed underslept you know um not recovering properly then a lot of your weight lost on your deficit or in calorie restriction won't even come from body fat which is sad but you end up in a skinny fat place and I, I, man <laughs> that's where i used to be i look at pictures of myself and i was like i am the definition of skinny fat um Increased hunger and food cravings is another one. The body responds to calorie restriction by increasing hunger and food cravings, which can make it difficult to stick to a calorie restricted diet, which is why we end up with binge eating cycles and then nutrient deficiencies as well. So obviously lack of calories means lack of nutrients. And if that persists for a long period of time, you can end up in a place of nutrient deficiency, especially if you're not using supplements to make up for that while you're in a calorie deficit, you may want to take extra things like a greens powder, right? Because that's going to have a lot of extra phytonutrients and antioxidants and things like that in it. Uh, vitamins, minerals. I always recommend like B vitamins, vitamin D, um, vitamin A, vitamin C. There's a lot of nutrients that will be very crucial for fat loss. And uh, we want to make sure that we're not deprived of nutrients in a calorie deficit. It makes fat loss a lot harder. So yo-yo diet versus the reverse diet. <laughs> As I mentioned before, we have the reverse diet where we slowly increase over time, the yo-yo diet is essentially the opposite. We diet, drop our calories down, and then we start eating the same amount of food again. But because our metabolism has slowed down with that metabolic adaptation, we end up gaining weight. And then our weight's up and we go, shit, I need to diet again. We drop our calories again, and then we lose some weight. And then we bring our food back up to where it was before because we get tired of diet dieting or whatever the reason is. And our body weight comes up again because our metabolism is now suppressed further. So with yo-yo dieting, over time, our metabolism gets slower and slower and our weight steadily climbs up. And so to in order to um, fix that, essentially, we need to do the proper reverse dieting. Now, this is a great question. How do I know if I'm ready for a fat loss phase? And this is really what this is all about. I wrote a post about this this week. And then I wanted to dive into a little, little bit deeper for you guys. So have you been in maintenance calories for four to six months? It's a good question to ask yourself. If the answer is no, and you have no idea what maintenance calories even are, it's time to start in maintenance. Do you have a consistent routine and understanding of macros? Are you giving yourself enough time 
And do you have a healthy relationship with the scale? Now, let me explain each of these in more detail, because if you answered no to any of these questions, you're not ready to focus on fat loss. I'm sorry. So have you been in maintenance calories for four to six months? Now, if you don't know what maintenance calories are, that's a good place to start and a good place to figure out. And if you're currently eating in projected maintenance calories, then maybe you are ready for a dieting phase. But do you have a consistent routine? Is your sleep all over the place? Do you fail to drink three liters of water today? <laughs> three liters of water a day. Do you fail to get eight to 10,000 steps in regularly? Do you fail to manage stress appropriately or train consistently? If you don't have a consistent routine, routine or a general understanding of carbs, fats, and protein, and you're not hitting adequate protein on a daily basis, then you're not ready for dieting. You need to establish that first. If you're not giving yourself enough time, let's say, for example, summer's coming, it's now March, and you just all of a sudden decide that you want to look bikini ready in six weeks, you're going to try and crash diet and suppress your calories so you can lose 15 pounds in the next six weeks. Guess what? That's only going to last as long as you can maintain that restriction. And as soon as you start eating food again, you're going to gain the weight back, if not plus some. So give yourself enough time and make sure that you're not attaching your weight loss journey to something external. I think that it's great to have like a goal in mind for a date to give yourself something to work towards, but be realistic with that time frame and don't make it a time crunch because that only leads to unhealthy patterns with dieting. And do you have a healthy relationship in, with the scale? Because through all of these phases, the scale is one measure. It is not the only measure. And we have to also be looking at measurements. We have to be looking at photos. We have to take subjective measures of energy, mood balance, recovery, strength. So your relationship with the scale needs to be healthy. If you get triggered as soon as you step on the scale, then you're not ready to diet. It's really important to heal that relationship first by staying in maintenance and just getting used to seeing those numbers move. You had more salt, you slept a little bit less, ate some more carbs, that number is going to change. And so you just have to be okay with that number on the scale because chasing numbers, <laughs> I promise you that there's not an inverse relationship with the scale. As the scale goes down, you don't get happier. That's not how it works. Okay. And where to start. So if you want to get started on a fat loss journey, number one is to determine where you're starting from. Have you been chronically dieting and under eating for longer than six months? Then you need to determine where you want to go. What is the end goal or result that you want to achieve? Is it primarily fat loss? Is it primarily muscle gain? Where are you going? And then pick the first step. Pick the phase of dieting that makes the most sense for you. Maybe it's a maintenance phase right now. Maybe it's reverse. Maybe it's a surplus or a deficit. Maybe you just need to work on consistency with your habits, right? So pick your first step and start there. And then commit to the fucking process. When you're trying to lose weight or get healthier, it's important to take things slow and steady. Don't just copy what everyone else is doing online because that's what works for them. And it might not even be the whole truth. And it's definitely not going to work for you just because it worked for somebody else. It's all about finding your own path and figuring out what works best for your body and your lifestyle. You don't want to go on a crazy diet that you can't stick to because it's going to make you feel like crap and also set you up for long-term failure. It's going to also make you feel very disappointed when you don't achieve the perfect body. Instead, you want to make sure that you're not just focused on losing weight, that you're actually focused on other things as well, how you feel, your relationships, your energy, your strength, feeling good in your skin, your confidence. And just remember that dieting is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, it's like take your time and make sure that you are committed to the process every day. Daily habits really matter here. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me. And I will catch you on the next episode of the E3 Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E3 Podcast. I had so much fun sharing my knowledge with you, and I hope that you enjoyed today's show. If you found value in this episode, the number one thing that you can do to support the show is share this episode on your social media platforms or leave a review. If you'd like to find out about the lifestyle programs I offer online, go to healthpillars.ca and click apply today to fill out an application for coaching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Peace, love, and personal growth.